Um, I know it's warm, so I certainly would expect a warmer greeting than that. Brothers and sisters, good afternoon. And since I am not greedy, I would love for you to share that warmth with the persons near to you. Just turn, give somebody a smile, tell them good afternoon. Make sure somebody next to you feels very warm. If you have glanced at your order service, you will note that we begin on the outside with an unveiling of the commemorative plaque and then we will and there's a response the congregation will make so the initial leader and response you are invited to respond accordingly you will hear from the mic on the outside and then the we will after the unveiling we will all sing together the doxology i'm sure you remember uh the, well we'll use the this this hymn 69 as the doxology um, those of you who would remember that used to be such a common part of our worship experience. This, this is the God we adore, our faithful, unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power, and neither knows, measure nor end. Is Jesus the first and the last, whose spiritual guide us safe home. We praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that is to come. And after that, we will have the procession of the choir and the ministers present. So we are good to go. And we will have a wonderful time in the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Man, say the thing like you're expecting the man. Amen? Amen. 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 Wonderful. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is none other than the house of God, wherein we will enter into covenant with God. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. May his glory fill the whole earth. Dearly beloved in Christ, this building has stood the storms and have been a shelter for all these hundred years. God Almighty in his faithfulness has made this chapel a place of worship, a sacred place of faithfulness had been made, we place our covenants made with God and each other. We have been sustained by your worship, study, prayer, fasting, fellowship, and celebrations. This stone now being installed representing these hundred years is a milestone that speaks of God's faithfulness and our commitment to worship and service to Christ and each other. Let us, therefore, recommit ourselves in our worship and service to God and each other, thereby fulfilling the purpose for which the building was made. By the grace of God has given me and the privilege of affording to me by the leadership of this church, the Bishop, Reverend Derek Richards, and the leaders of this circuit and congregation, I now unveil this stone as a sign of God's faithfulness and our commitment to keep the covenant. This, this is, is the Lord's doing. doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the God we adore, our faithful and changeable friend, whose love is as great as its power, and neither knows measure nor end. The first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us ever, we'll praise him for all that is past and trust him for all that 
that's to come. Jehovah, for he has done so very much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Congregation, kindly stand. Shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Nara, 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 Shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Watch out. We continue the act of celebration. I ask you to kindly stand as we engage in the call to worship. Oh, the choir will lead us in the intro.
Amen. Come walk this way. Let us turn our minds to the direction of worship. Come walk this way. Let us turn our hearts in the direction of love and fellowship. Come walk this way. Let us turn our feet onto the path of peace and goodwill. In our celebration and thanksgiving, we reflect on what God has done for us. Come walk this way. Enter into the sanctuary. Give praise and thanks to the covenant God who has kept his promises. This is a day which the Lord has made. Come let us give thanks. Let us celebrate the goodness of God, God. For, for God is faithful, faithful and, and there is no, no limit to his love. Come, let us all unite and sing. We join our voices together and sing. Come, let us all unite and sing. God is love, God is love. Printed in your order of service, so it's number two in the Voices in Praise. Come, let us all unite and sing. God is love, God is love, one can they praise his ring. God is love, Wow. 
seated as we continue in prayer. Good evening, everybody. It is with difficulty I am trying to read this thing. The print is fine, and the sight is not very good. So would you bear with me? Heavenly Father, you are God of vision, purpose, and destiny. We who are gathered in this act of celebration and thanksgiving magnify you for your faithfulness. You let your glory fill this place. We loud and extol you for love. You have, uh, you have appointed this day when we could come and shout how great you are, how great you are. The walls of this building speak. They, sound, they sing your praises. They declare your goodness and faithfulness. For by your grace, they still stand. We praise you for raising us up, raising up us up as a people for and for using us as your servants. We praise you for the witness of your love changed lives in this village and those in other communities. God. We glorify you by our diligence to worship, our willingness to serve, and the study of your word, for our fellowship with, them, with each other, and for the ability to do all things in your name. We praise you for knowledge, for the knowledge that nothing can separate us from your grace and favor. No walls, no buildings, no altar, no pew, no pulpit, nothing inside nor outside the sanctuary. We lift up our hands and voices in worship and praise for the celebration of 100 years in uh, this location. We continue, my brothers and sisters, in our prayer of confession. I invite you just to take a moment for silent confession and then we will continue with the prayer responsibly. We continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, Day and the night, these walls stand as witness of your goodness. As they proclaim how great you are on the earth and in this Charlotteville village. These walls are a sign for those on the high places of your unfailing love. 
your guidance. High seas, your unfailing love, your guidance, your protection. And yet we have failed to be that sign for those among us. The roof of this chapel faces the sun and points to the heavens. Yet we have not kept our eyes on you. We continue in prayer. Lord Jesus, you have set before us the way to walk. You have made living stones of us. And you have given us this sanctuary not to hide, but to make it a sign of your presence among the weak, the sick, and the disenfranchised. Yet we have made it a place of brokenness and pain. Holy Spirit, you have breathed upon us and filled us. You have made us one. You have given us courage and power to reach the last, to witness about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, to testify of the changes made in us. But we have become stumbling blocks for seekers and open trenches for the blind. Lord Jesus, our hearts are bare before you. You know the pain we feel because of our failure to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Our failure to love our neighbors as you have loved us. And our failure to tell of your amazing grace to those who are lost. We admit that we have at times caused division in your church. We have waited for others to do your work even when we have done it. Even when we have done it, we have complained bitterly. We ask your forgiveness and pray, dear Lord, that you will help, or help us. We ask your forgiveness, O oh God, and pray that you will help us To die to self and surrender to Christ. Renew a right spirit within us and make us witnesses of your grace and glory. This is the truth that we believe. If we confess our sins, you can say with me, read with me. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to... Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Beloved in Christ, you are forgiven. Anyone the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. We say thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord, for setting us free. everyone and a happy Mother's Day to all ladies present. Thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we have been commissioned by you to go into all the world to preach and teach all people. John Wesley also gave us the charge to offer Christ to all men. Our ancestors received the accepted and accepted the gospel and made Christ their Lord and Savior. Covenant God in love, Christ walked the path of sacrifice. We are inspired to do likewise, even as our ancestors did, and let us, left us a legacy 
of faithfulness. And so in thanksgiving, we are determined to walk and serve as we follow in their footsteps. Lord Jesus, our ancestors like us had two paths before them, the easy and the hard, the broad and the narrow. They made hard choices and made great sacrifices. They knew the hardship of slavery, poverty, and colonization. Yet, in their suffering, they placed their hope in Christ and left a heritage for us to follow. Holy Spirit, the worship of our ancestors and this chapel are signs of their devotion, discipline, vision, and determination to lift up Christ, strengthen families, save the lost, and nurture the young. Their example of service to us is a, is a memorable one. On the 100th anniversary, on the 100th anniversary of this chapel's relocation, we come into their space Thankful for those who paved the way. We come into this space. Thankful for those who paved the way and let us, which followed, left us a legacy. We give thanks for your guidance and presence which followed our ancestors all their days. We give thanks for that same spirit, which will abide with us as we walk to, live, to leave a future for those who will come after us. statement of purpose and welcome will be done by the congregational stewards and also a welcome by Sister Dillon. everyone by our gathering here today we celebrate the goodness of God and the vision God gave our ancestors to build this new chapel 100 years ago in this valley by the sea for years it stood as the most imposing structure in this village and for many it is still the same as a sign of God's presence with us. Today is historic, but it becomes a marker for the future. Like our ancestors before us, so we must now leave a legacy for our children and their children. As you have come from near and far to worship with us, we hope and pray that the Holy Spirit will move mightily among us and stir us 
to sacrificial service. Superintendent Minister, Reverend Adolph Davis, our specially invited guest and past minister of this congregation, Reverend Marcus Tosho and his wife, Sylvia Tosho, Reverend Lord, Reverend Sherman, Reverend Elton, who is not among us at this moment because of unforeseen circumstances. Honorable Ayana Webster Roy, parliamentary representative for Tobago East. Our chief secretary, Mr. Farley Augustine, our circuit steward, Mr. Youssef Alexander, local preachers, ministers, or their representatives of other denominations, other specially invited guests, members of other Methodist congregations and other denominations, those who are viewing us via social media. We at Bethel do heartily welcome you on this auspicious occasion of 100th anniversary of this chapel. We are indeed grateful and thankful to God for bringing us thus far and pray that his Holy Spirit will continue to guide us so that we can celebrate another 100th year we do appreciate your presence here with us and pray that you will enjoy whatever we have to offer you this afternoon. God's blessings and welcome. I also want to say a happy, happy Mother's Day to all mothers and pray that God's blessings will be upon all of us and may we continue to serve him in spirit and in truth. Thank you. This afternoon, I welcome all and sundry gathered here to celebrate our 100th anniversary. May glad for say everybody in the congregation, them from other denominations, the politicians and minister, especially Reverend Tosho and his wife. All them who work hard for building chapel must be smiling in the grave for see this happen. Today is our day to rejoice and have fun. So we ain't leaving till everything done. I may be little and my, bo and my voice may be small, but a big, big welcome I extend to one and all. Amen. Warm welcome indeed. Let's give her another round of applause. So we are going to stand now and join our voices and sing about the great faithfulness of God. The God would have allowed 100 years in this part of his vineyard. We stand and sing to his honor and glory. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my God. Thank you. 
But tell God is faithful. Hallelujah. Indeed, he is a faithful God. Please sit. At this time, we are going to receive greetings. And we have representatives from the churches in the community. I ask you to kindly come and share your greetings. Honorable Farley Augustini, Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly. Honorable Anayana Wester Roy, Member of Parliament. Reverend Derek Richards, Bishop, Methodist Church, South Caribbean District. Other ministers who have worked in the circuit congregation. Brother Yusuf Alexander, Circuit Steward. Methodist Church, Tobago Circuit. Other representatives from churches. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Reaching a century always calls for celebration. I don't know if they will celebrate mine when I reach there. It's just behind there. However, it's rather important that we pay tribute when tribute is due. Hard work was put in to arrive at this situation. I want to congratulate the church for not only inviting the other churches, but for seeing it as a wise thing to have this celebration. In this community, we have something sharing. A love that is not understood by many people of other cultures. Whenever we have a church activity in the community, all the churches are invited. So we from the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have been in, um, invited and we have come to share in this celebration, this 100th celebration. We thank you for the invitation, and we hope that this type of thing will continue in the community. That camaraderie, where we show that we enjoy living among one another, regardless of our religious faith or belief, we continue to be a humble people in the same community. And when one feels pain, all of us feel the pain. So again, I thank you for this invitation. And I hope that this will continue to exist in this community called Charlottesville. Thank you. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. All protocols observed. I was taken a little by surprise because I saw the list of persons to speak on behalf of the various denominations within this area. 100 years. 100 years is indeed a long time. And the fact that we are still here and we are still in the service of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. It means that we are doing something good. We, as Christians, Methodists, to be precise, we have a responsibility. And our responsibility is to spread the gospel of Christ throughout the world. 
starting from right within our community. So that everyone will have an opportunity to hear of the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to come to know him as Lord and Savior so that they will be able to walk the way so that when they depart this earth, they will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. We must continue our journey. For we fight not against flesh and blood, but against all the evils of the world. And with Christ as our leader, we will be successful. Today is 100 years. We are indeed happy. We are indeed proud. And we will have to continue for eternity or until Christ come. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon and continue in the business of winning souls for Christ. Thank you. Okay, our dear Reverend Wilkinson is coming and she's going to give greetings from ministers who would have worked in the circuit. And after that, we'll have greetings from the Bishop of the South Caribbean District. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Special greetings to those who are here in their official capacity. We do have the superintendent and other ministers on the platform here. We also have with, among us our member of parliament for Tobago East, Honorable Ayanna Webster Roy, and our chief secretary, Honorable Farley Augustine. Welcome to you. Permit me, before I even do the greetings, I'm here to do the greetings for ministers who have sent in their written greetings. And later on, you would hear videos of others who sent theirs by video. But as I sat there and I look at Reverend Marcus Torshawn, I want to give a testimony that it was while he was serving in this Tobago circuit in the Bethel congregation that he looked at me one day and said, Reverend Sherman, no, Sister Sherman, I want you to consider preaching. And I smiled. I said, Reverend Torshon did not ask me if I know the Bible, but he's going to tell me consider preaching. He was the first. The last person who was able to convince me is now my deceased godfather, Henley Perry. And when he spoke to me, I knew it was from God. I thank you. Thank you, Reverend Oshan. I am delighted in sharing God's word all the time. So I have greetings from the Reverend Derek Richards, who is unavailable, unavailable at this time to be among us in person. His greetings read, Dear brothers and sisters, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to share with you in this significant celebration of God's faithfulness over the past 100 years of worshiping in your present chapel. I therefore extend special greetings on behalf of the South Caribbean District of the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas, comprising the circuits in St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I also, on their behalf, congratulate you on the occasion of your 100th anniversary in your present building. Allow me as well to extend greetings on my own personal behalf and that of my family. We regret not being able to join you in person for this service of thanksgiving. I have no doubt 
that your 100 years in this current building is packed with stories of hopes and dreams, disappointments and discouragements, success and failures. Some of you celebrating today may have grown up in this church. You may have been baptized as an infant, attended Sunday school, participated in youth group, and on, unless the course of life changes drastically, this is the church that you will always choose as your home church. For some, this is the church within which you have raised your children to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And rejoice when your grandchildren were offered for baptism and confirmation. Some of you have moved away from the community, but you have returned today because this church community has had such a powerful impact on your life for which you are grateful. 100 is a long time. If you have been part of this church, there ought to be a sense within you that you have helped to build something for your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to inherit. The men and women who started this work knew that they were not just building a church for themselves. They built it for their children and their children's children. As you build on their legacy, you ought to be aware that you are building for the stranger, the outcast, the least, the lost. It is for the children and the teenager. It is for the aged and the aging. It is for all who wish to enter your doors. They would have built it. You have sustained it, but understand that it is for others. If the founders of this church were to speak to you today, I wonder what would they say? What would the minister of this congregation 100 years ago say to you? I think they would say to you, do not be disheartened, for I have news for you. It is no secret what God can do, what he has done for others, he'll do for you. Ye fearful saints, fresh courage take. The clouds ye so much dread are big with mercy and shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's flowers bloom, by waters calm or troubled sea, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. 100 years ago, church was pretty much a given. On Sundays, the world stopped for worship. It was assumed a good citizen was also a member of a faith community. Now, such cultural expectations are gone. Congregations like Bethel Methodist will need courage to explore and create new ways of being the church so all might see the light of Christ. Now that doesn't mean rejecting what is gone, your fun, what is called your fundamental traditions and the centrality of the gospel. However, it will require leadership that is willing to take risks, holding firm to what is central to the Christian faith while encouraging exploration and creativity at the same time. As you move forward with Jesus in this changing world, Bethel will need to be clear about its identity, its mission, and its commitment to raising up leaders who can lead well in this time when the church is under threat from the powers of this world. Keep pressing on 
and moving forward in faith, believing that God will do what God has promised to do. Reverend Derek A. Richards, District President, South Caribbean District of the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. I have one other to read, and that one comes from Reverend Victor Job. Greetings from the Reverend Victor H. Job, Minister of Bethel Congregation during the years 1976 to 1980. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is with a deep sense of joy that I send you this greeting on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the Bethel Chapel. My wife, along with my two daughters and son, join me in sending this greeting. I congratulate you on this significant milestone on your journey of faith. I still cherish fond memories of my ministry among you from September 1976 to August 1980. This is so not only because Tobago was my first station after theological college, but also because my first daughter, Trisha Ann, was born in Tobago. How can I forget stalwarts like Arthur Moore, Burnett Moore, Hicks Marcel the Handyman, Cornish S.M. Carrington, Lincel Allen the Organist, Kenneth Murray, Aldine McKenna, the tailor, Winston Dick, Wilfred Ashby, John and Lillis Lewis, to name a few, the majority of whom have now joined the great cloud of witnesses. They have all helped to make my ministry in Tobago a happy and memorable one. Anniversary is an occasion to look back into the past as well as to examine the present and look forward into the future. As you look back, you may think of the founding fathers and mothers, persons who have begun the work even before the laying of the cornerstones of the present building on May 16, 1923. You may think of those who have carried on a faithful witness over the years, who have kept the faith alive, and who have passed on to you a godly heritage for their service to God and their invaluable contribution to Methodism. We give God thanks and praise. Anniversary is also a time to examine the present and look forward into the future. In doing so, you may ask questions like, what is our present state of affairs? Where do we go from here? How can we continue the faithful witness we have inherited? Do we have the personal commitment of time and resources to carry it on? Are we really serious about it? These are only some of the questions that may come to mind. I suggest that as you look into the future, you will use the present moments of celebration to take inspiration from your founding fathers and mothers. Rededicate yourselves to the Lord. Ask him to grant you the Holy Spirit so that you can carry out his witness, this witness and in obedience follow where he leads. Bethel meaning house of God, has over these 100 years been providing physical and spiritual shelter from the storms of life, as well as being a symbol of the presence of God in the midst of his people in your community. May you, the people of God, continue to be a beacon radiating the light of Jesus, 
and attracting others to him as you carry out your witness in word and deed. And may this anniversary celebration be an occasion for your own spiritual renewal and rededication so that you may be further equipped to carry on the work. Certainly, the times in which we live are different from the times of 1923. But the call and commitment remain the same. It is my prayer that he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Happy anniversary, Victor, Reverend Victor H. Job. So we're going to have another one came in, and this is also from Reverend Bourne, another one who had challenged me to become a preacher. Every blessing as you work towards breaking the curse strengthening the mission and reshaping the future in Christ. It was for me a privilege and a pleasure working with both old and young in the Charlottesville area during my tour of service. Today, I continue to thank God for the happy fellowship, the enduring friendships, the generous helpfulness, the love and the care which we all shared as we worked together to improve the quality of life for the benefit of the school and the Charlottesville community. As a matter of fact, living and working in the Tobago circuit was for me a blessing which redounded to the honor and glory of God, our Heavenly Father. As indicated in your letter, many whom we loved have left us and having completed their pilgrim journey, we still love them, and as Christians, we do have the assurance from the word of God that nothing in all creation shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us all then, by God's grace and the enabling power of the Holy Spirit, continue to do our best to advance the work of God in Charlottesville. Let us in this new era commit ourselves towards breaking the curse, strengthening the mission, and reshaping the future in Christ. Our God, who has called us to mission and service, will supply us with the strength and the grace for the task that lies ahead. Best wishes and God's blessings to all at Charlottesville, and indeed in the entire circuit, with love from J. Henry Bourne, Reverend J. Henry Bourne. And before you hear the played videos, which will come to us from Reverend Pierre Claudel Zephyr, Reverend Gillian Wilson, Reverend Cornelius Harry, and Reverend Franklin Manners and Mrs. Hyacinth Manners, and I love to speak about the manners. Reverend Franklin Manners, who solemnized my marriage right here at Bethel, three months short of 40 years, and my husband, Linval. I'm looking around for him, I'm not. Oh, he's under the 10. Franklin Manners did it for us right here at Bethel. I also want to say that Reverend Esther Moore Roberts, has sent her own personal greetings and also that of the Montgomery Moravian Church, the congregation she pastors. You will now have the videos that were sent to us. Greetings to you, the Methodist people in the village of Charlottesville. Hyacinth and I are very pleased to extend greetings to you, the pastor, officers, and members of the Charlottesville Methodist Church, as you celebrate the 100th anniversary of the founding of your church. We remember fondly, you know, coming and being among you, 
in the year from 1980 to 1984. It was a time of learning for us. Our stint there, it, it was our second appointment in the Methodist ministry. This appointment was quite different to the previous one and required much adjustment on our part. Um, in addition, we were at the point of starting a family. I remember I came with Mark, Michael. He was just um, some six weeks old. Charleville people, I remember, very helpful. And, um, you know, there was much changes in the life of Charleville, especially comparing it with Barbados, where we were. I remember fondly um, even getting jokes with Molin. I brought the child to church with his nice little feet, and Mullen was quite annoyed that I brought the minister's son to church without her shoes. Um, and Mullen was quite annoyed, you see. It's, it's fun memories. As you mark the 100th anniversary, there is much to thank God for, not least of all the stalwart men and women who have kept the beacon of faith lit in your community over the years. We join, join you, you in, in celebrating, celebrating this milestone, milestone and your and rich legacy and pray that and your witness, witness will continue, continue to undiminished for generations, generations to, to come. come. May God continue to bless you all and fun memories up to now when we get little clips of what is going on. We smile to ourselves. Happy Michael, celebration. Michael and Mark, especially Michael, um, want to join in this greeting as it was the first place he was, Boogsy Wiggles, he was there. And <laughs> enjoyment that we have both shared. God bless you. Happy well, celebration. I'm aware we have some challenge Amen. with the audio. Um, so we will see, we'll have to see how we can deal with it because it's going to be a you're playing it and you're not hearing it. So I, I don't know. We'll see if that can be rectified. But if not, we can go on to the other greetings and then we will, if that can be rectified, we'll deal with that. Let me invite now the Honorable Ayana Repsor Roy to bring greetings, and after that, I'll ask the Honorable Farley Agassin, Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, to bring their greetings. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Lord. There's a running joke that you should never put a politician in front of a mic, but I promise you I will not be very long. Let me recognize our Honorable Chief Secretary, Fali Augustine, members of the clergy, those who are serving now, who are visiting, as well as visitors from various denominations. Let me also say good afternoon and recognize the members of the Bethel congregation and those of you who are visiting. A hundred years for any church is no easy feat. Why we celebrate 100 years of this building in this location, a church is nothing without the congregation. So I commend the people of Charleville, the people of Bethel congregation, that you have been able to stay the course for 100 years. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, I want to make a call to the ladies in, gathered here today. Let us continue to make children so we continue to fill up the pews. <laughs> so that Bethel will be able to go on for another hundred years. I also, I also want to commend the choir. I always enjoy coming to Charleville and listening to your beautiful singing. I love the alto in the background. So congratulations to you. And to all of us, let us as children of God continue to walk in our purpose continue to do our best to serve each other and while we serve each other continue to honor God congratulations happy Mother's Day to the mothers and may God continue to bless all of us
Honorable Member of Parliament for Tobago East, Webster Roy, members of the clergy who are here, members of Bethel Methodist Church, and uh, special invited guests. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to congratulate you on this milestone. 100 years is a very long time. I'm sure we have no one city, seated in the congregation this afternoon who is 100 years old, which means that this edifice is older than the oldest person seated in the congregation and older than the oldest person currently alive in Charlottesville. That means a lot. And so there are two things I want to tell you. The first is that whenever you sow a seed, you could really never tell how big that tree will grow and the kind of shade that it will throw. But you sow the seed in faith nonetheless. And 100 years ago, 1923, some good people came together and sowed the seed, planted the seed, planted this church, and this church has resulted in a lot of development for the village of Charlottesville. And so the second thing I must do is to express gratitude and thanks to the Bethel Methodist community because you have played an integral role in the development of this community. You played an integral role in education. You have a school next door and you have educated quite a significant number of the villagers through your school. You have produced from this church a representative, member of parliament, senator, you produce priests, you produce teachers, police, firemen, everybody could think of. I mean, we wouldn't think of the miscreants today that might have walked through here, but it showed that your influence resulted in this community being better off a hundred years later than when this church got started. So thank you for that seed of faith that you sowed. Thank you for your contribution to the community. We continue to see it every single day. There is nothing Shalaville doesn't have that you don't see Shalaville Methodist. You go awake, Shalaville Methodist leading. You go heritage, Shalaville Methodist there. You some cultural performer, Shalaville Methodist there. Fisherman, Shalaville Methodist there. Church keeping, Shalaville Methodist there. You literally are everywhere. And that's because your presence, your contribution is quite ubiquitous and we thank you for that. So on behalf of the rest of the community of Shallaville, we say thank you to Shallaville Methodist, Bethel Methodist, and we pray that God will keep you for our next hundred years. And above all, above all your contributions in the local community, your most important is preparing people for the life to come, for Jesus' second return. Thank you and God's richest blessings to you. We are going to have Remember When, Brief History, by Brother Anthony Moore, Sister Susan Moore-Turner, and Sister Vita Dillon. Remember Rin When. V, I I says I alone know about this service here today. When I get the invitation, I say I must be in Bethel, Charlottesville, Manawa Bay for this occasion. But when me they come on the flight, the flight delay, and me say me have a meeting. Come what me, I not even going home. So I said, just as I am without one plea, so me meet. Eh eh, girl, me not me say you know ina come here. Wait, where you mean? I really thought was me alone coming here today. You know? This could have gone without me. Girl, me well catch me tail for get time for my flight. Anyhow, but me say come on, me me sleep at airport and all. Oh, God. So me glad for them. Now we go. Because we go. the cities, this could not miss me. You know, 
Oh gosh, watch out the place look pretty. Really? Girl, I nice. saw we saw leave that church when we go abroad. No. Wow. But wait, all and sundry the other place here. Yeah. Look, Miss Amor and all, but oh, oh, sure. everybody come home. Oh Lord, well I tell you, this year is a real celebration. What you mean, but look, Miss Amor and all? Why are you so noble about telling me this church? Plenty. Why are you so noble about telling me this church? Let me tell you something. You ever hear about Mount Stewart? That place up a bar hill top up there? Were the first church in school and school in there? Me, me hear about the, that. The, and the, me hear that one man giddy bell for up there. Who man that? Some man fan, some skin. Captain Stewart. Captain Stewart give the bell from his ship. And in gratitude to Captain Ooh. Stewart, they named the place Mount Stewart. Oh. Who give the land? Tell me. You know about Methodist history. Well, you can't beat me with that. Some man not open. Not at all. Mr. Tucker from the Space Side Estate, Space Side yes, Land, come yeah, all the way back up there. Tucker, give the land for the chapel school up in Back Hill. And let me continue to talk. The thing went on for a while. As a matter of fact, there was a little storm later on and they had to move the building. But hear this. Mirilda Morvin tell me that when she Mirilda in a go a school up there, when they come down from the school where the teachers they couldn't see them, they used to fight a place where them washing those come down there and they call the place Fighter Gully. You ever hear that name? Fighter Gully, yes, that place where them said that land said those come down there. We've been away, girl. Oh gosh. Girl, them, I saw a little bit. Listen to the story. Eh? Let me tell you this. They bring the school and the church down a bay. Now you talk about Guy Topin. Guy Topin give the land right up opposite Cadet Murray up there to put the chapel school. And there is where the school was. Because but during that time, during that time, you know, you know, Minister Village, you know? the minister uh, used to know. travel. Talk no, to me. me. Talk no. to me. From Betsy Hope. Yes. You know that? Yes. Yeah, me hear that. Yes. And enough to move because mosquito, mosquito infestation. infestation. Yes. Yes, girl. Yes, plenty of them. Most of them will take the fever. I bet it's up. And they break the man's the mission house and bring up the mission house by boat. Coastal steamer bring the house and they set them up by boat. During that time, a minister came to Charlottesville and was resident here. Which part in there? Which he part used, in there? He used to live at Hermitage. Ah, that's right. Oh, you're chipping, I know. You remember the man name? Reverend Reverend Leslie Muffat. Muffat. Muffy. Reverend Leslie Muffat oh, was the Muffat, man. Muffat. Living in Hermitage by the Hermitage Great House. The Great House was given to the Methodists for that time by the estate owner, Mr. Robert Reed and also the owner of the Campbell estate. And that was not all. Those estate owners were paying the ministers and that went on for a long time. They were taking care of the ministers. But here you now, during that time, when the church and school in the up there, they said, nah. They talked to Guy Topping again. And Guy Topping said, give them some more land. So the man's up there, the church school there, and then this part here, you see this level ground that how we are sitting here attack? This now in a level ground, you know. You four parents and them drop pickaxe and luchette and oh, Panda dirty there. That, watch the bank, watch the wall there. And them will bring that down to this. That, you talk about work? What? And you could tell me when that happened? In 1923. That are when the church was commissioned. But. When the happened? action started around 1920. Oh. The school come down from up in Barkley about 1895-96. And by 1920, they start working on this. You know who turned the sun to start this, this building there? So, uh, that's the history of this Thank place. you very much. You think, you know. Go ahead. Let me hear you. Me glad for know where we come from. But me, I tell you, when me know about in a meeting. Talk, girl, talk. In a meeting. Yeah. Like if I will leave a church. Tell all your friends about Sunday, Sunday school. In a church Talk morning, to me, man. Sunday school evening, and then my church. Oh, gosh, I will not come at all as little children. When you are talking about 
house of church start from five o'clock. Because Atta we need a family altar. You couldn't there at a more place and not get up for family altar. So I was going to start from five. But that did not go on every day. The family altar, no only yes. Sunday. Yes, but it's Sunday, even though it's period stop the other days in the week. Sunday, and I forget up. Oh, and let me tell you something about Sunday school. Me remember when Sunday school used to do sick visiting. Gala evening, I was going about the wheels and Miss Annie for visit. The flooring collapsed. <laughs> oh, my... Are uh, we dropped through? Oh, that, that evening they mean sick me now in come after oh, school. Girl, Miss Perry just said that we close off. Tell all your friends about Sunday school. Tell, Tell them, them to come, come down and hear us. Yes. Then are we song. Listen, are we get real groups at a church, you know? Are we get girls brigade? Miss Perry again in the lead and teacher Olivia. Miss Perry, you remember? Boys Brigade. Girls Brigade. And in the Boys Brigade too. too. And listen, I tell you, we go camp in a Campbelltown. When Mr. Greeley, they mean live at the Wasa place. Girls Brigade go camp. Girl, me no know who interfere with the Jack Spanier. You know, Jack Spanier start to bite her way up. And we just have to close up and come home. Look for village. Okay. Uh, you touch a good note. You talk about boys' brigade, you talk about girls' brigade, and we had to talk about how much this touch shall produce. We had to talk about Reverend Tenley Perry disease. We had to talk about Reverend Sherman Wilkinson. We had to, here now, you have to talk about the circuit steward and them, Samuel Allen, Theodora Graves, Whitney Nicholson, Arthur Moore, Wilfred Ashby, Annette Alfred, and you know, they said me could be so kids to me. Say, nah, Charlotte, we'll get enough. I'll take somebody else. We say, are you left me alone? Wait, boys brigade, you remember them boys that behind there? You remember the BB team? Bruiser Lewis, Ashby, Peter Jack, Gordon Moore, Vonnet Carrington, yes. Top, but you know, a big cricket team from Charlottesville to Roxburgh, God don't come, if licks I, like peace. If I was so for get a really strategic place, eh, you're going to take out with the old days. Me want so to, that we break up that me want to tell you something before you leave my boys again. Mr. B when boys we get down and night here, march everybody home. Left, right, up at Belliard Road, down at Camberton. When you come up at Chapel Street, you get them Allen boys, Joseph Allen and his brother. When Godwin reach home by where you live, here they are March, eh, right? And yes. them have a march to go up at hey. Upper Bamboo hey, Village under the march. Oh, we have to talk about you group days. Oh, yo, yo. Well, I wanna when are we used to get youth rally? And when Charville go down, I Licks will like bees, man. with the singing. The only people in a girl we challenge. Cunningham Mace, sisters man. out of Mace Cunningham Norman. Sisters. I tell you, we but must otherwise, come. otherwise, they couldn't handle our way. When we land down and we get them quartet, so a Scarborough Methodist, I will bring home all the children. Church in the valley by the wildwood, man. Here now, you put about them ministers. Me, brother Christopher, tell me. He said, boy, baptism used to be a solemn occasion, especially them Bayesian ministers. Do you them? See how Israel jumped the shepherd's town in all the gears and charms? <laughs> you know that? It's how we hold his tender lambs and gentle fold them in his arms. arms. And that used to be, you remember Buddy Wills for communion? Oh, Buddy Wills used to walk. This, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The solemnity, is, yeah, walk like a walk. Ah, you remember that? Hey. Buddy Wills, man. Oh, yeah. Let me wrap up. Time for, me, let me oh, tell God. you something. I tell him, he get a minister in a serve. He give out to him. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee, then aid the minister. If you don't if mean you it, don't, mean it don't, don't sing it. it. <laughs> Wow, Daro must be there pray for Porter still. Ah, Daro. Ah, this one. <laughs> well, you've got a taste of the history. Maybe next time when the 100 years will be celebrated, we'll get a different taste. But will we be here? Our names will be called. God continue to bless you, Bethel. I want to say congratulations as well as being one of your most recent past pastors. Continue to strive on, continue to seek after God and to walk in his ways. So we are going to stand now and enjoy a time in fellowship as I call on the persons to lead in the praise and worship.
Testing one, two, three. Good afternoon, everyone. I yes. hope everyone is having a great time. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers and all expecting mothers Testing. in the congregation. Let us all stand and have a great time. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ is son. And now, and now, let the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord.
God Almighty reign. Hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reign. Yes, he reign. Oh, hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reign. Oh, let us sing, let us shout. Oh, let us sing and let us shout. And give God all the glory. And give him all the glory. He reign. Shut 
going up together. We're going up together. We're going up to prosper. Oh, in the name of the Lord. We are going up. We are going up. Aha. We're going up together. We're going up together. We're going up to prosper. Oh, in the name of the Lord.
just the chorus. Great are you, Lord. 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 recognize the presence of Reverend John Carrington and I'm going to give him the opportunity now just for a minute to share his greetings. Good afternoon church. It's better late than never. But I have another other engagement today, but I told them that I'll be late. I want to recognize my ministers up there, Reverend Lord, Reverend Tosha, and I can't remember the other name, but right. And for everybody that is here, I want to bring greetings to the Bethel Methodist Church on the 100th anniversary. And this is coming from the Mount Beulah Spiritual Baptist Church in Charlottesville. We grew up here with one school, knowing one school, one main school, called the Adventist School was way up on the hill. That came down here, the other one came down here after Flora. But Methodist Church is what we grew up with. When we were children, we had to be Sunday school, life boy, boys brigade. You couldn't miss because even though we as boys, we would run away on evenings when we're supposed to be in Sunday school, but one of the person have to be in Sunday school to bring the news and say the text was taken from. If you can't say the text when you go home, you know what happened. That means you didn't go to, to the Sunday school. So we grew up there, and then as we matured, then we grew up and some of us grew out. But we still have that, you know, that thing for the Methodist Church. As a matter of fact, I wonder if I should say, I am the, one of the musicians in this Methodist Church. I've, been, I've done weddings in this church, Scarborough Methodist, Mason Hall Methodist, Roxbury. I've done weddings on behalf of the Methodist Church. I'm a marriage officer. So I am well acquainted with the Methodist Church here. We share our pulpit time from time to time before now, because Reverend Harry, Reverend Harry shared our pulpit. There's a, other two other ministers who share, we share pulpit. So I'm, I'm accustomed to be, I'm a part of the Methodist Church in Charlotte because it, but ne, don't always forget where you come from. If you, get your, if you forget your past, then you would, do, you would ignore where you're going and you wouldn't be lost. So on behalf of the Spiritual Baptist community, I want to extend greetings to you and may God richly continue to bless you. May we all work hand in hand as life goes on. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.
Then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herders and my herders. <laughs> This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and, Gof and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled amongst the cities of the plain and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, After Lot had separated him, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northwards and eastwards and westwards and northwards and eastwards and south northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards. For all the land that you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring will also, also can be counted. Rise up, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel, please stand. It is according to John chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to verse 10. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you, abiding me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. At this time, we'll have the introduction of the speaker. Then we'll have the ministry in song. And then we'll hear the preacher, the Reverend Dr. Marcus Tosho. Good afternoon, church. The ownership is placed upon me to introduce the featured speaker. Reverend Marcus Torshaw has been a Methodist minister for the past 29 years. He is currently the superintendent for the Coventry and Nuneaton circuit of the Methodist Church in the UK, where he has been assigned since 2006. Before leaving for the UK, 
Reverend Toshaw served as the superintendent minister for the St. Lucia circuit and the South Trinidad circuit. He equally worked in the King Town, Kingston and Chateaubelay circuit in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in the Tobago circuit with pastoral responsibilities for lands for me, Goodwood, Ebenezer, and Bethel Congregation here in Charlottesville. He is a holder of a PhD in Missiology, a master's degree in Emerging Church, and a bachelor's degree in Biblical Theology. He is married to Sylvia, who shared his ministry here in Tobago, where she worked as a nurse. They have very fond memories of the Bethel congregation and the Charlottesville community. Together, they have a son, John DeLuke. Reverend Torshaw has recently been appointed chairman of the Bristol District of the Methodist Church in the UK. He has a passion for mission and church planting. I now present to you the speaker for this evening, the preacher for this evening, the Reverend Dr. Marcus Torsho. of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea, farther than the mountains, farther like the fountain, out of fish and just for even me, greater than the grave of my transgression, sing it, greater God than all my sins and shame I sing. i 
Church, <clears throat> good afternoon. <clears throat> good afternoon, church. Church, good afternoon. I am back for good. Some people would not like to hear that I'm back for good, but I'm saying this to mean it's good to be back home. How are you, Bethel? Allow me to associate myself with words of greetings and uh, congratulations and uh, fair play that, that were extended before. I'm not going through all of this. My job is really to go through the word with you if you give me such, such permission to do that. So is that okay if I go straight? Thank you so much. But I should nevertheless mention that my good brother here, we kept talking because we have not seen each other for a while, the Reverend Davis. He was um, in England doing his master's. We spent a year together. We had a lot, a lot to catch up on. But nevertheless, I'm here more so for the word. But let me also say how much respect I have for Erna, Arlene Dick, who has been picking up as Reverend Elton Watson has moved away from the scene for the time being. We've been in touch, and this event has become possible uh, through different, uh, of course, WhatsApp messages and so on. But it is good to say thank you to um, your congregational steward for, for a job so far well done. I am particularly gracious to the invitation that has been extended to me. I don't necessarily travel not because I don't like to come to the Caribbean, simply because 
eight, 12, let's see, this one was 10 hours uh, I'm in flight from, from um, Heathrow to here. I don't do it every day, but this one, I had to say yes to it. Is that okay, Bethel? That I had to say yes to come to Shallonville. Why? I started my ministry right here, upon the hill. My first sermon as a preacher out of college was right here in this pulpit. The be one of the best churches around is Bethel Methodist Church. They know how to nurture a minister. I was saying to Reverend Davis that during my time here as a minister, I saved nearly 75% of my stipend. Oh, you did not know that. I wouldn't have told you that because you would stop giving. Nevertheless, you will never do that. For those of you who don't know the Methodist language, we're not like the THA brothers and sisters who get salaried every month. We are ministers. We get a stipend. If you want to know what that means, ask Seven Davis after the service. <laughs> it's already 28 years since I, stand, I stood here. You wonder why I'm still having some gray hair creeping in and out. Some of you say, what has become this young man we had 28 years ago? I am aging in wisdom and grace. Is that okay to say that? Yes. I, are you aging in wisdom and grace as well? Yes. I'm not getting too many yeses, it's all right. I join my heart with your heart, especially as Sylvia traveled with me. Some of you have forgotten who is Sylvia. Sylvia is my wife, the only wife. And I'd like you to stand still pretty and uh, to see how she looks now. When I got the call from Reverend Elton Watson, she said, what's this about? I said, I'm being invited to go to Tobago. He said, I'm canceling my, my appointments. I'll be coming along. I said, here you are. Let's get going. Church, this afternoon, I'd like us to reflect on a simple theme based on the theme you have chosen. Maybe I should remind you of the theme that you have chosen. What is it? It is breaking the curse. Can you, can you continue? Strengthening the mission. Reshaping the future in Christ. For this occasion, I'd like to dwell on in Christ. Let's raise the bar higher and higher in Charlottesville. Can I hear that? In Christ, let's raise the bar higher and higher in... I didn't hear that, church. Let's try again. We have the whole night to be here. Is that okay? In Christ, let us raise the bar higher and higher in Charlottesville. By the way, when Reverend Elton Watson called me and... Uh, Sister Senna, they continued. They never said how long I should preach for. So should it be 100 minutes? Thank you. The super has given me license to go for two hours. So you're here until tomorrow morning. Is that okay, church? We'll see what happens as we keep progressing. John 13. Or rather, Genesis 13. And John 15 invite us to consider what it means to raise the bar higher and higher as we allow the scriptures to speak to us in terms of no food, no food, some food, more food, and then much food. That's, not, that's what I would like to live with you today. So let me go again. No food. Can you say that with me? Then what comes after that? Food, no, yes, food. And then the third one is more food. And the last one is much food. Wow, we're getting somewhere. If you don't remember anything at all today, remember no food, food, more food, much food. Why are you with me, yeah? yeah? You got it, yeah? yeah? 
So let's look at the first one. And to do that, I'm going to cross. I hope I can be followed by um, the, the, the digital brothers and sisters. What is this? Is it a basket or what, what is this? It's a bowl. So there is no fruit in this. It's empty. Do you see that? It's empty. And because it is empty, it takes us to John 15, verse 2a. It refers to the Father's initiative in these words. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Highlight this for me in your mind or as it is printed there, no fruit. The basket is, the bowl is. Why should we highlight that? It is because it yields to, to the evidence of spiritual stagnation. It signals the lack of productivity towards spiritual fulfillment. However, according to Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, we discover God wills differently for each one of us here today. What is it that God wants? He says, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. In this case, Bethel, the Lord's prosperity for you as a church and for the village is in store. This suggests, therefore, that curse is the withholding and deprivation of God's prosperity. Such that abundant blessing is on pause. No one, no church, no village is really cursed. Literally, they're not. But that in God's richest blessing, they have failed to claim that which is theirs. Put it, put it in a different way. Your blessing has been withheld. And people refer to you as though you are cursed. But you're not. So in this way, a branch that bears no fruit is not cursed necessarily. It is a branch that is waiting for its potential to be fulfilled. However, in our context... It suggests a life kept in captivity by evil forces. It's like a life that is being wasted away. No productivity. It is made such a life of disappointments and frustrations. It is akin to a fig tree that is somehow cursed. A village that is haunted by the evil spirits of idleness. Domestic violence, gambling, drugs like weed and cocaine, and witchcraft, such that the blessing of God is locked away. Since curse is the withholding of God's prosperity, a people under the curse of finance, for example, are enslaved by their addiction to spending. You would have heard that over and over. To be is to have the power to spend. So in this way, we are enslaved by our addiction to spending. So we gamble away our life, we squander, we waste our lives and get further into bondage and debt and trouble. But it is not really a curse. 
Just like the prodigal son situation, no ambition, no vision, no direction characterizes a life whose blessing is being withheld and blown away for a while. In truth, there is no such thing as no food or a no food brunch, a cursed village, a cursed individual, a cursed church, no such thing. Instead, we have people whose lives have been disconnected from the vine. We have potentials or possibilities sitting right here, living within our communities. It's a matter of claiming through Christ. It's a matter of abiding and connecting with the vine so that your potentials, your possibilities, and your dreams may be released and fulfilled. The unique way for us to break the curse according to the theme, is to maximize our full potentials by abiding in Christ our Lord. It is the Lord who says to us, Come unto me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burden, and uh, I'll give you rest. The rest. The rest that Christ offers is here. Claim it. Let me say it loudly. You are not cursed. Your blessing is being withheld. Do you recall this story in Daniel where Daniel was praying and praying and praying and praying, but the, the message, the deliverance that the message was to be, that was to be given could not be handed out because the, the prince, the the, the, the the, the, the Lucifer who has assigned someone in charge, the prince of Syria, had withheld the answers to the prayer. The blessing that we are inheriting today, after we would have said, lived 100 years in this place, is significant enough to say that Bethel Methodist Church is a blessed church it's a church that has potentials. It's like a sleeping giant. Can I repeat that, church? Bethel is like a sleeping giant waiting to unleash power. Potentials. By claiming through Christ the great vine, the true vine, that which has been withheld for years. Now let's move from... Are you with me there? From no food to... So there is a basket. Another, someone is going to bring for us um, a basket or a bowl that has fruit in it. So here we have it. You can go there uh, right, and show the church. What do you see in this? What well, you may not see it. We think there is food, yeah? Is that okay? There's some stuff there. We have some... Melon, that's right. So we, I can put this over here. I think so you can put it somewhere there, wherever that is good. So we have some food in the house, don't we? Thank you. And that takes us to John chapter 15, verse 2b. What does it say? Jesus confirms. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Can you read that? Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. This is about fruit. And Jesus saying, my father prunes the branch that bears fruit. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 9, we get a vivid example of pruning as Abraham, as Abraham is determined to let go of Lot, his nephew. I want you to stay here with me in the text. If you're tired, I'll get you to stand up. Because we, I know you've been here for over an hour, but let's get going. Hear what is happening in this text, chapter 13, verse 9. 
Abraham said to his nephew, Lord, separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I'll go to the right. And if you take the right, then I'll go to the left. Pruning for Abraham here is to let go of his nephew, a source of unceasing quarrels. A distraction to the dream. For the greater purpose of food bearing. I need you to notice something with me as well in verse 2 of chapter 13. Abraham was a rich man. Silver and gold, he got it. He needed to let go of a distraction with a view to strengthening the mission he had. Church, we need to identify the likes of Lot in our lives. In our church, they are distracting us. And bid them goodbye. Are you prepared to do that? It was hard for Abraham to say goodbye to his nephew. But he had to say that because he needed to transform the mission. There is something bigger, greater. The big picture is here. I'm not allowing my nephew to mess up the plan. Would you say amen with me, church? So it is like saying goodbye to Egypt in order to say good morning to Canaan. You there? It's like to say goodbye to some old church traditions that are sucking the blood of the people and say good morning to a church full of possibilities and dreams. Are you prepared for that new beginning? It's like saying goodbye to a church that's like a social club. A PTA meeting functions better than that church. No healing ministries. Wow. When we say goodbye to a social club, we say hello, mission opportunities. Hello, meaningful fellowships. Hello, vision for the church. So one of the things I want you to reflect with me as a church is as you continue to serve and there is some food in your basket, what's the vision towards having more food? We'll see that later. For the time being, we need to, trans we need to strengthen the vision by enabling food in this basket to survive and be there. It's like saying goodbye to a church culture that, I mean, where people are on edge, hurting one another, crippled by divisions. I thank God this is not Bethel congregation that I served 28 years ago. There is love in this place. Am I correct to see that? Hello to a church with a blessed opportunity to serve. We get to let go of the distraction. The youth, let go of the distraction. Focus on your books. Is that all right? You young man or you young woman, there is someone in your life who's messing you up. Say goodbye to the distraction. Focus on the future. You will find another man anyhow. Hello. Well, some of you here are not interested in something like that. So that's not for you. But nevertheless, you will find another young, nice young woman. Let go of the distraction. Focus on the, on the task at hand to strengthen your future and your life. Goodbye to friendships and relationships that inhibit, drain, and suck our energy like a leech does. In order to say hello to a much glorious, freed life in Christ. To raise the bar a bit higher, Bethel, you need to get rid of the distraction. What is that distraction here? I don't know. For the village. The village is not cursed. 
It's a blessed village. I am enthused by the way the community has come together to be the Charlottesville community. But there is a time to say goodbye to some distractions in this village. You know, when I was here in 1995, we had a fishing industry there. It's still there. Hallelujah for that. The pet gas station is still there. But come on as a village, when are we becoming a town? The THA um, leadership is listening, you know. John 15 says, ask for everything it will be given. When will Charlottesville become the town in the north of the island? Tell me. Uh, you, know, you know some people from Charlottesville, you don't know what to tell me. Let go of their distractions at the THA. When I was there, the talk was on. It's still on and we're still struggling as a community. Let me take you further. What's there for our youth? Tell me. This morning I went to the beach and I was having a soak, whatever you want to call it. And as I was walking back, I said to four people, is there anything in this village for the youth? The Methodist Church established a school many years ago. The Anglican came on board. Other initiatives have been had. Should not we move from a state of not having a school to that of having school and then build on that momentum? Where is our high school? Is it coming? Is it here? No, is it here? Space side is space side. Together we can do it. Let's concentrate on that which is the distraction as a city. Or rather, maybe I'm prophesying, as a village. I'd like to come back to the youth because I've just learned from my colleague that the THA House of Assembly is made of young people. This is the time to get something for the young people to concentrate on our youth, to invest in our youth. When this young lady stood up there, she did what she did. Tears came to my, uh, to my eyes. The youth need you. By the way, at, before the service is over, I'd like you to think of putting aside $100 to for the youth of the community. I don't know what we're going to do with that money, but you are going to help us with $100 towards doing, creating something for the youth. Let's go of the distraction. Let's focus on what matters to transform this community and strengthen the vision. There was a situation of a guy who had a nice, I, I saw it in a, in a book recently, not recently, I should say, over five years ago. There was a guy who owned a mule. <clears throat> and the mule lost its way. It jumped into a well. While there, they were looking for the mule and no one could find the mule. One of the workers decided, um, I mean, spotted the mule somehow at the bottom of one of the wells. So I kept reading that segment and it went further to see when the owner of the farm discovered that the, the the mule was down there at the bottom of the well he decided to just bury finish up with the mule there he started throwing trash at the mule down there are you there the more trash they threw at the mule the more the mule was getting to step up, raising the bar was, was the motto of the mule. And the more the owner threw trash, the more the mule said, Hallelujah, I am getting closer and closer to my dream. I don't know about you. When people are throwing trash at you, shake it off, step on it, and progress. Avoid the distraction. Get on with the work. I do not know a Methodist minister people don't talk about. I do not know anybody in the House of Assembly, the THA people don't talk about. I do not know anybody in leadership we don't talk about. What we need to do is to shake off the trash, concentrate on the mission, and get closer to the dream of fulfilling what? Freedom. You know that mule finally run 
into the wider field because trash became opportunities, steps to get closer to the border and the reality of freedom. Get rid of the distractions so that food leads to more. Well, let's bring the third basket. Someone is not finding it, but he's fishing for it. Have no fear. And while Reverend Davis is there, I'm going to ask him to bless the fruits because the fruits dare to be eaten. You're not going home without eating the blessing today. Reverend Davis, you knew what was going to happen. Please bless. Uh, there is one more to come. Hold on. Bless what's there. Bless what's there. Church, are you there with me so far? Yeah? So we move from... Wing it. This is what? Much fruit. So should I start with you again? Let me try. Let me hear the children in the church. Children. By the way, all of you are children. The little ones. Let me hear you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Do you know when I went to buy the, uh, to the village to buy the food, I ended up being in a wonderful store owned by Leon Murphy. When I finished, I said, tell me how much this is going to cost. He said, is it for the anniversary service? I said, yes. He said, it's free from my store. So I am not taking the food back to him. They are blessed and ready to be used. But the point I want you to see here is that at number three, there is what? More food. 100 years, there has been food. But we need what? Church, I didn't hear that. We need what? More food. Let me take you back to Genesis chapter 13, verse 10. It says, After Lot had separated from Abraham, the Lord said to Abraham, Raise your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Verse 15 says, For all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. Remember, Abraham had silver and gold. He let go of his distraction. The Lord said, having let go of the distraction, there is more food coming your way. You moving from gold and silver, now I'm giving you land. Say amen, church. Amen. You need some more land in this place. Because 100 years later, this building should be too small. Amen. Do you agree with me? Amen. We need to ask the government, where do we find another piece of land? Because 100 years later, because I heard one of the representatives from THC said, we need you to be here for another 100 years, not in this building. Amen. Hey, church, say it with me. Not in this building. Come on. Not in this building. You need to move higher and higher. you raise the bar. Higher. We can use this as a retreat center. We have the school. We have everything here. But we go in higher and higher and higher. I don't get any amen for that except the reverend. Because you love, the, you love this chapel. The songwriter says, we love this place, O oh Lord. I know we love this place. But the church is the people of God. 100 years later, see it to this building. You did well. Goodbye. Erna? 
Yeah, goodbye. Suzanne? Not 100 years later. should be closer than 100 years later. We're moving from... If you listen to Anthony, there was no chapel. We started in Hermitage. Up there, there was a place where the preachers were organizing, the schools were there, and we moved from there to this one. You can't tell me 50 years later, 100 years later, you're still in this and now come on, something needs to happen. Hello. Uh, you didn't invite me to tell you that, yeah? I'm not saying to break it down. I'm saying to open a new one. Because you're moving from no chapel to chapel and well, let me give you the phrase. When, when um, Ezra returned from the Babylonian captivity alongside Nehemiah, they had destroyed the walls of Jerusalem. The city was in shambles. Ezra made a powerful statement. He said to the people around him, the temple that we go in to rebuild, the splendor of that temple will be greater, far greater than the one you had that was destroyed. That's the dream of a church. You think big, you think much higher than where you are. Our Lord is not a Lord of mediocrity or just some food. He's a Lord of great and great abundance. Moving from... Come on, church. If you're not talking, I will get you to stand up. What about if you were to say no joy in your life? And then what do you look for? Joy. What else? What else? Some people have been navigating through the seas of life where it's not easy for you. It, has, it is as though you are, you're not progressing. There is nothing to show as fruit. Everything you touch seems to be turned into pieces. There is no hope, apparently. But this is not where God has designed you to be. No, don't be comfortable there. Get up and get going. Rise and walk. As you make steps after steps until you get to the transforming moment of your life in Christ. So, Abraham had to say goodbye to Lord in order to see the transformation of, of, of his mission by receiving now land. Let's go and look at verses 15. Uh, verses 5 and 8 of John chapter 15. Should I read it for you? This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Say it with me now, church. Much fruit. Again, highlight much fruit because Genesis chapter 13 is going to say something more. Genesis chapter 13, the remaining, the same verse we were looking at before. It says here, I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. What? What's going on here? Abraham moved from what? From silver and gold, that's some food, to a place where land was provided. And then now God is saying, that's not it all. Your children will inherit what you have built. And you will not be able to count them because they will be like this sand of the sea. This is much blessing. The question for you and for me in terms of much food is this. How well are we doing in terms of passing this church to the next generation? Wherever you see an Elish, Elijah, look for Eli, Elisha. Wherever you see uh, Moses, look for Joshua. Wherever you see Paul, there is the great Timothy. There is the great Titus. Whom do we pass this church to? We had four 
local preachers when I was here. Arthur Moore, Wilfred Ashby, um, Shalomith Berry, and Mrs. Marcel. We still have two of those wonderful preachers left, and they are still with us. Who's going to take... Uh, is there a new preacher in the house yet from Charlottesville? Is there a new preacher from Charlottesville so far? Not yet. And the two preachers are having a meeting to know what to preach next Sunday. But it might be a situation where Charlottesville is need to get some comfort break. Nevertheless, the motivation call for you and for me is how do we transfer or hand over that which we have received? This chapel needs to be cared for by people you have raised and shaped and coached and enabled to say we are here today it's time, mom and dad, to take a break. We are picking up the button and we're pressing on. That's what the Lord has said to Abraham. Don't worry. You have silver. You have gold. I'm giving you land. Now there will be a new generation to take over from you. Get rid of the distraction. Strengthen the mission. And then you will transform the life of the community in Christ as new people take over. There is this song I love singing. It's not... I think it's still in the in, in, in VIP. It goes like this. It's by Theodore Monod. It's about the spiritual journey that we go through. He said, in his struggle with the Lord, none of you and all of me. That was the first phrase in that struggle with the Lord. Then the Lord kept probing in, talking to him. That's right. Oh, they bit ashamed and so. Then the second line com comes in. Some of you and some of me, Lord. There is a progression there. And later, Mon Theodore said, more of you and, and less of me. And the last verse, last uh, phrase says, all of you and none of me. This is where I, I am inviting you to take your spiritual journey. The food I'm talking about here, it's also about, it is also about your spiritual life. What quality of food, food do you have here? Or oh, not here. There. And you keep going across. Remember, the food, whatever is there, we're not taking it back home. Especially in this heat, some, some, some melon will do well. Now well, let's look at this. How do we continue to have our lives transformed? How we transform this community and in fact the church as I end? Is, should I go for one hour? No? Is that all right? I know you've been there for so long, but let me remind you of this. Number one, think big because your God is a big God. Could you say that with me? Think big because our God is a He's a God of great possibilities. Number two, invest in the young people. I said I would come back to that. If we don't invest in our young people, 100 years will come, this building will be history. When last some young people from this church attended a youth camp in the circuit, at the district, or even connectionally? You see? When last we brought the young people together in our space to even criticize the church? They, they have the right, the intelligent people. Where will your children be when the next 10 years arrive? So I want you to remember the possibility of investing in young people. What can we do in Bethel Church to enable our space behind here, here, even the school, to be properly utilized? Do we need some kind of professional school in Charlottesville? Yes or no? I heard something someone told me this morning too. I said, what's there for young people? He said, we have nothing. 
People who have money in Charlottesville, they send their children beyond Charlottesville. But those who don't have, you can only fish. And everybody can be fishing in Charlottesville. What else do you do? He said, we play football. But well, the football tournament was called off or something happened. Ah, what do we do for our young people, your children, your grandchildren, and great-grandchildren? This is where investment in youth is necessary. If we establish a school, we can continue to establish more with the help of our government. Do you know Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean? is placed second as the richest country? Should I repeat? Do you know you are rich? Do you know you are blessed as a land? So why are you living on that which is not worth living on? You need to move from to and, and in this village by beginning with the youth. Because weed is available. Cocaine is available. When young people have nothing to do, they turn to these kinds of drugs or they give you children before they can even cook at home or finish their school because they have nothing to do. Let us embrace as a church Bethel, the house of God. Let's welcome the youth. Mind you, it's not easy to welcome the youth into the church. They have their own ways. And sometimes we are set in our own ways. We don't let the youth be themselves youth. That's not for now. My point is let's invest in the youth. And trust me, church, you will have another Charlottesville, another community, and another spiritual upheaval. The last one I want to leave with you is that the time has come as well for us to work together as denominations in this church. I listened to um, Pastor John and the speaker who came before. Charlottesville is too small for churches to be divided in fact, they should be celebrating the gift of life, the fruit that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. If all the five churches were to come together alongside the house of assembly, this community of youth will be celebrating day and night because this, our life, has been transformed in Christ because the church is receiving us. The church is embracing us. The church is giving us or making us proud and I can't wait to come back another time, maybe when I am a bit older. I'm not telling you how old I am. You want to know? Well, I'm not telling you. I end by saying the spiritual revival of Charlottesville will come with the young people. I have no other hope then for you parents to see how these little ones are progressing. I was speaking with someone. He said, my son is doing music in one of the schools in Trinidad. Children are born to bear fruit, and they keep moving on and on. And I am reminding you of this. A new chapel will be needed. Spiritual revolution is shaping. Curse is not what you think it is. It is a process of withholding depriving people of their right, their undeserved blessing from God. And when those forces are at work to keep people deprived, we as the church turn up and say, enough is enough. Let go of the distraction and let focus on the future because Charlottesville is for Christ and Christ loves Charlottesville. Amen.
Thank you, Rev. In response to that message, let us stand and sing. Love divine, or love's excelling. Joy of heaven to earth in dawn. As we continue in prayer, the prayer of commitment. <laughs> Be led by Brother Walter Lewis. Good afternoon, church. Prayer of commitment. I'm asking present and past members to stand. We all go together. Almighty God. Your glory is in this place, but at times we have failed to behold. It's due to our disobedience, lack of love and commitment. So today, as we celebrate, give thanks, we dedicate ourselves to you, your church and the values we hold as people called Methodists. Help us your grace to be different and so shed the light of your grace and glory on us. We declare the hope we have in Christ Jesus, our Master and Savior, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.
Good afternoon again. For those who weren't here when we brought greetings, I greet each and every one of us in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and soon coming King. Birthdays and anniversaries are special occasions, and if there is anyone celebrating a birthday or an anniversary and would like to share it with us, could you please stand? The church at least, yes, yeah. but others. <laughs> Any other person celebrating birthday or anniversary today or during the week? Okay, we don't have anyone. Our notices continue. We have our prayer meetings on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. via Zoom. We have our celebrations continuing, and tomorrow we have at 10 a.m. our community project. That is some benches we are donating to the community and we are all in, we are inviting you all to come along tomorrow morning for this project. And down at the play field, down at the play field, we gather there, 10 a.m. And tomorrow afternoon or evening, we have our training session on leadership. And this will be facilitated by Reverend Marcus Torsho. And this will take place right here at the chapel. All stewards, leaders, and office bearers, you are asked to attend. On Tuesday at 5 p.m. also at the Atmore Auditorium of the Charlottesville Library, you are invited to a series a Methodist Calling. So we, here you are invited again to come along and share with us. Reverend Marcus Torsho is the person again. On Wednesday, that's Education Day, a full day of activities, commencing with a church service at school time, 8.30, and then we would have an interactive session with the children, teachers, past and present. We will have a full day of activities there. And then at 6 p.m., at the Banston, down at the Banston, we will be having an open air service. And this would be done by Reverend Adolph Davis, our superintendent minister. He would bring the word for us. And this at 6 p.m., 6 p.m., and this would conclude our activities for this section, this part. The other would be done in July, and you would be informed. Next Sunday, we all gather, all Methodist friends and well-wishers, we gather at the Goodwood Secondary School from 9.30 a.m. for our Alders Gate convention. In the afternoon, there will be a choir competition. So come out and support your choir. There will be duet and solo competition for our children. Members of this congregation, you are asked to give your names for transportation. There will also be a quiz competition for, for our schools. Five of our six schools are preparing to participate in this quiz competition. And this will be on Thursday 
the 18th of May. The competition takes place at Bonacord Methodist Chapel from 9 a.m. And the finals would be in the afternoon from around 1. Let us pray for our sick and shutting members, visit them, and give them a word of encouragement. Our harvest cantatas, thanksgiving and cantatas continue. And on the 28th of this month, May, Castara Congregation will be celebrating their harvest cantata, thanksgiving and cantata. These are all our notices. For now, you will be informed later as to what would take place after. So, thank you all for listening. We have our offering right now, and the choir will minister to you. The Savior's coming in my people and spoke and speaks to my soul. And all of my life from that very hour has yielded to his control. Has yielded to his control. Oh, it is wonderful. It is marvelous and wonderful what Jesus has done for the soul of man. The half has never been told. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. It is marvelous and wonderful what Jesus has done for the soul of man. The heart has never been told. What knows is less lost in this glory divine. I train and waiting for me. Where sweet and honey and milk and wine was proven from every tree, was dripping from every tree. Oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful what Jesus has done for the soul of man. The heart has never been told. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, marvelous and wonderful. What Jesus has done for the soul of man. The And brighter and brighter the glory goes. 
Hallelujah. Wait, brother Mo, don't wait. Wait, wait. Shall we stand as we receive the gospel? We're going after the chorus and everybody going to join the choir with the chorus. Amen? Yeah. And we will get the bass and the alto and the all finger and everything going to put together in it. Amen? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. That's a, Sister Annette, man, she boasting all for better than us, always. So once, once the offering is finished, brother Mo will strike us up with the chorus. And we will all sing the chorus and we'll end with a bang just like how the choir ended with a bang. Oh, it is wonderful. It is marvelous. Everybody, it is one. wonderful. What Jesus has done for my soul. The harbor. It is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful. What Jesus has done for the soul of man. The It is wonderful, not true? It is wonderful. It is marvelous. It is wonderful. What Jesus had done for the soul of man. Hey, we blessed, you know. You know that, right? You don't sound like you know that. The only reason we could be here playing bright is because of what Jesus has done for the soul of man. He has given us a chance. Let me make good use of the chance he's giving us, you know. So let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts that we, you have blessed us with. Everything we bring here is really yours. Forgive us because sometimes we are arrogant and foolish thinking it's ours. But the psalmist got it right. And you can say with me, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all who live in it. So God, whatever we give is really giving back to you. What is yours? But as we bring our gifts, oh God, we are mindful that what you want, even more than what comes out of our pockets and our wallets, 
is what comes from our hearts. And so, dear God, we know that what you want more than anything else is for us to be able to say, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. So, God, we bring our gifts, but we also surrender our lives so that you could take us higher and higher and that we can bear much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will continue to bless our hearts.
Zion, he will come for to his praises and make all I kill and light the camp and of the Lord. Joy and gladness, joy and gladness shall be Wonderful indeed. We led the intercessory prayers at this time by Sister Abby Allen Moore. Evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers present, all the ladies present. May God continue to bless you. Prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we bow before your throne of grace, conscious that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. We magnify your name in this period of intercession. We pray for the church universal and especially in the Caribbean. Guide and strengthen her that she may persevere in faith and holiness. We pray for the people called Methodists. Prune us for growth and service and return us to the values of your kingdom so that we can be beacons of your love and light to the world. Unite us in your love for purpose and mission, and help us to serve you as we serve your children with obedience and passion. Break the curse of a lackluster faith, hopelessness and disunity among us. Strengthen us for mission by your spirit, and we shape the future through us. We pray for the leaders of this country, Christine, the president, Keith, the prime minister, Kamala, the leader of the opposition, and Farley, the chief secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. Guide their minds and hearts that they may serve with wisdom integrity and honesty break the curse of segregation selfishness and injustice among us strengthen us for mission by your spirit and we shape the future through us we pray for this country for the crime situation which has caused many to live in fear and experience loss and suffering from the layer of worldliness and its attractive tendencies, we seek your deliverance and protection. Break the curse of worldliness and immorality among us. Strengthen us for mission by your spirit and you shape the future through us. Lord Jesus, you set the foundation of the family and promised that through you, 
generations will be blessed. We pray for families experiencing brokenness and hardships. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. We pray that they may experience restoration and renewal. We pray for those who are lonely and have lost loved ones. We pray for those who have not known you as Savior and those who have fallen away from fellowship in our churches. Break the curse of a lack of love and care for each other and the mindlessness of your grace among us. Strengthen us for mission by your spirit and reshape the future through us. O oh God, we beseech you to make love your ever prevailing law in our hearts. Help us that our love for you will be evident in the way we love others. Open our eyes, hearts, and hands to those in need and grant us grace to touch them with your love and compassion. All, Almighty God, in your mercy, we ask that you hear the prayers of your people. Grant us the will and wisdom to break the curse, to strengthen our mission, and work to reshape the future. By faith, we declare healing, wholeness, and revival in and among us. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord Jesus. Amen. We'll have the Lord's Prayer by the tune Kumbaya. continue with the presentation of tokens and after we are going to have expression of thanks.
afternoon, we're going to give out some tokens to some nonagenarians, that is persons, mothers 90 years and over. So the first person we are going to give to is Sister Shilamit Perry. Take it down to her. We are next in line, Theodora Graves. Theodora Graves, someone is collecting on her behalf. Then we have Elizabeth Jack, Joanna McKenna, Elizabeth Jack, Joanna McKenna. and Carolee Christmas. Miss Joanna McKenna, Sister Joanna McKenna, and Sister Carolee Christmas. We don't have anybody collecting for Sister Carolee. Then we have some special gifts that we want to give to some special persons this afternoon. Sister, Sister Torshaw, Sylvia Torshaw, we have a token for you. It's Webster Roy.
um, Farley Augustine, Honorable Farley Augustine. And then finally, we have for our preacher this afternoon, Reverend Marcus Toshio. <laughs> Sister Sylvia will want to donate something to us. These are some plaques for the church and something for your communion table that we brought you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. That's all for our presentation of tokens. We stand and bring this act of celebration to a close as we sing, And Can It Be? It's an expression of thanks. Good evening, everyone. What a great Sunday it has been. Marvelous in God's eyes. I greet everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and soon coming King. The pleasure is mine this evening to thank all who have contributed to making this memorable occasion a success and to be treasured in this church's archives. The psalmist says, in everything we should give thanks. And indeed, today is a wonderful day and occasion to give thanks and to acknowledge the goodness of God as we celebrate this milestone in our church's history, the 100th anniversary of our chapel. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy that has covered us so that this celebration can become a reality. Thank you, God. The Honorable Ayana Webster Roy, Member of Parliament for Tobago East, we extend sincere gratitude to you for taking time away from your family on this special day, Mother's Day, to grace us with your presence. Your presence here is greatly appreciated and we are humbled. May God continue to bless you as you serve his people. Yes. To our honorable Chief Secretary, Farley Augustine, words cannot express how deeply grateful we are to you for making it possible to be a part of this auspicious occasion here today. As the representative for this area, we know that you hold the people of Charlottesville dearly in your heart and would not renege on the opportunity to be in our community as your beautiful wife hails from here. We pray that God will richly bless you and continue to strengthen you 
to carry out your responsibilities as Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. I must say a big thank you to Reverend Marcus Tosho and his beautiful wife, Cynthia. Sylvia, for gracing us with their presence. To you, Reverend Tosho, for consenting to be our guest preacher for our 100th anniversary celebration. You have been one of our past preachers who have served us faithfully in this part of God's vineyard. This afternoon, we are happy to have you back home. You have touched the core of our hearts with your thought-provoking words and your inspiring message. So on behalf of all here gathered, we say thank you for allowing God to speak to us through you. We pray that your message would bear much fruit in our lives so that we can move from no fruit to fruit into more fruit and to finally to much fruit. Mm. Sincere thanks are in order for Reverend Elton Watson, the present presbyter of this chapel, in his absence. We know that he has done a lot of hard work. He is not here presently with us, he's unable to, and we know his heart is here and is following us on, one of, on the platform, social media platform. Reverend Watson, we want to thank you for putting all the plans in place so that today's celebration could be a success. We miss you dearly and hope that you will be able to rejoin us soon. Reverend Derek Richards, our South Caribbean District Bishop, we thank you for your encouraging words and your support and the best wishes that you have extended to us on our anniversary celebration. All other past preachers who served in this metal congregation and who have sent greetings to us, we applaud you and look forward to your continued support. Other preachers here present, Reverend Eve Lord, Reverend Sherman Wilkinson, we thank you for your presence and service provided to God's people. Not forgetting Reverend Janice Jack Watson, one of our ministerial staff who is unavoidably absent here today. Our circuit steward, Brother Yusuf Alexander, and the other representatives from other churches and denomination, denominations, we heartfelt thanks go out to you for joining us in our celebrations and for bringing greetings. Thanks to the wonderful choir, the choir, under the direction of Brother Anthony Moore for your soothing and sterling renditions. We are so grateful don't they look wonderful? Yes. So we thank God for them. And we hope that we'll continue to use those beautiful voices in the service of God's will. Our musicians, media personnel, magnificent service providers, our technical crew, Brother Kern, and all others, we are so thankful for allowing you to be here with us today and for enabling us, enabling those who are unable to be here physically to view this event on the social media. What a transformation. Those who have not been in this church for a long while, when you came in here, what did you say? That you were in the wrong church, isn't that so? This church has been so transformed for today's occasion. And I know that some creative hands are among us. We thank the decorating crew and the cleaning crew outside. If you look outside, what a marvelous sight. All the tombs are painted in the same color. It's a wonderful scenery here today. And we are thankful for those who had, who did the preparation for today's celebration. And we, this has not gone unnoticed. Thanks to all who participated. Special thanks is extended also to Keneal, who did that wonderful welcome speech. 
Those who have donated to this cause, whether in cash or kind, we appreciate the gesture and we thank you. Those who participated, either by in the service, reading, praise and worship, whatever, we are grateful to you and our sincere thanks go out to you. Our hard-working steering committee under the chairmanship of Reverend Sherman Wilkinson, who have worked tires tirelessly to bring today's event to fruition, we extend heartfelt thanks to you. Last but not least, to the congregation, we extend gratitude to you for being here. If we had made all preparations and the pews remained empty, then all our work would have been in vain. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. May you, whether you come from far or near, may you have a safe journey home. Finally, happy Mother's Day to all mothers. May you continue to shine your light so that others will see the light to Jesus. Hope no one has been left out. If anyone was, the organist, musician, Reverend Davis, I forgot to Reverend Davis, yeah. the organist, we are thankful for the wonderful music and the accompaniment. Reverend Davis, thanks to you, Reverend Davis, our hard-working, energetic, and vibrant superintendent, Minister for Tobago Serpi. We deeply appreciate the work you are doing among us. Thank you. Hope no one else has been left out. If anyone was, it was not intentional. So I say thanks, thanks, thanks to one and all. Chair to a successful 100th anniversary celebration, May 1923 to May 2023. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sister Dillon, for thanking all of us. God, continue to bless you. Let us stand and sing to the honor and glory of God as we bring our time of thanksgiving and rejoicing to an end for today. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursue. I'm going to intrude a little bit. So we'll sing the three verses. Then we'll, I'll do the closing remarks. Then we'll sing the last two. And then go straight into the benediction. So we end with the, and can it be, rather than my remarks. So we'll just sing the first three. And then we will have the remarks. And then we'll end with the last two verses. And then we'll have the benediction. And then the choir will benediction the benediction. All right. And can it be? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's love? Thy day for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it that thou my heart should die for me Amazing love How can it be That thou my God should die for me This mystery all the mortal dies who can exclude his dreams is high? In the first month, 
Herb tries to sound the depths of love divine. Tis mercy, oh, let us do. In quando mo, tis mercy. Let us do. Let us just mind in quando mo. He left his father's throne above, so free, so in the night he emptied himself all but love and bled for her dumb helpless grace. This must be all a man and free for oh, oh, oh. God found out me, tis mercy, all oh, immense and free, for all oh, my God it found out me. God is good. So give me two minutes so I could take a brief a seat for a moment. I'm mindful that Sister Annette wouldn't want to stay standing until the two last verses. We give God thanks for today that we celebrate 100 years. Amen? Amen. Amen. I was struck by the fact as I was reflecting on it, 28 years Reverend Torsham was here. I think that speaks very well for the impact he had in his time here that 28 years later, he was invited to preach at the 100 year celebration. Amen? I think that is a very wonderful testimony of the ministry Reverend Tosha shared with us. As you have heard, some of the ministerial and, and other circuit staff is, is missing today. Some are overseas. Reverend Janice is on leave. Reverend Watson, because of some immigration issues, I'll say something briefly on that. Um, Sister Grace, the other circuit steward, she also, of course, would have loved to be here and sends her greetings as well. She's also overseas. So we, we are missing a few persons, um, and I'm sure their heart is with us here. I don't know if you know, but years ago, most, almost all chapels were designed something like this, with very high roofs and a steeple. And in those days, most church communities had one or two churches. You know one of the reasons the church had such a high roof and steeple? Not just the air condition, the cooling, and the acoustics, but it allowed the church to be one of the most visible buildings in the community. In many communities, and that's why in many communities, the church was also on a hill. So in almost, well, long ago, a lot of the communities, the most visible structure from anywhere in the village used to be the? I wonder why. Because there was a time when it was expected and understood that the church, and not just the church, the building, but God and the people of God was supposed to be the center of the life in that community. You hearing that? That wherever you are in the community, the church defined the community so you should be able to see the church. Because the church was center. Is the church central and I don't just mean Charlottesville Methodist Church, but is the church central to Charlottesville? Do people still look to the church for direction and guidance and example in rightness and righteousness? I think, you know, I'm, I'm happy we can celebrate 100 years of the building. But remember, this is more than a building, eh? And our primary mission, brothers and sisters, is not just to be a place that gathers but to be a people who share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that all men and women, boys and girls would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen? Amen. So I'm praying that we, as we celebrate the building, it will also cause us to remember our purpose. Why is the building here? The building is here so we can be more faithful in our ministry. Amen? 
No, that's a serious thing because sometimes we focus more on gathering rather than ministering. I also want to recognize a blessing we have that sometimes there are two things before the blessing. I want us to put our hands together again for the choir. And I tell you why. I tell you why. Before you clap, I know you notice it, but I want to highlight it. It's not very often you see a choir with such a mix of young and old, etc. Come on, are you seeing that? Come on, let's put our hands together for the choir. So my challenge to the choir is that this composition wouldn't be just for the hundred year, but this would be the choir of Charlotteville. Are you with me there? Because you know sometimes we just draft in the young people and others and then the young people after the thing they want to sing. So we're hoping that this will be a continuous look of the Charlotteville choir. Amen? Because they sounded it good, not true? Yeah. yeah, they sounded it real good. They sounded it real good. I also want to use the opportunity to acknowledge there's a blessing we have in the Caribbean that I don't want us to take for granted. Um, so today we have the Minister Webster Roy and the Chief Secretary present in worship. Now, I think in many of our Caribbean islands, we have the distinct privilege of being able to have in church activities, church services, the leaders of our country, our political leaders. I think that's a very significant blessing. Are you, are you, I don't think you realize that. And, and I, heard, I heard both of them give little mini sermon and thing, you know, talk about us as people of God and, and you know, we must prepare people for the second coming. I heard and I took notes. And, and for me, that's significant. Because I think it's important for our political leaders to understand the importance of the church, not just the building, but of people and their relationship with God. Are, are you with me here? Yeah. So I, I, we, we, we are blessed to have them present and sharing in this occasion with us. Amen. But at the same time, I, I hope they notice in the order service, the order service was prepared before we knew they were coming. You notice we, as is customary, we pray for all political leaders. Not true? Because we believe that they can't function right without us lifting them up before God. And our desire is for our political leaders to lead in righteousness because it still is true that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to a people. So we thank God for them. And we want to pray for them continually and want to encourage them. You know, I'm happy when I hear all politicians talk faith. And we really have to encourage and pray for them so that they will really be lights that they live out their faith in the politics. Because it's good to, to have faith in here, you know. But when they're in the, 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 the functions, we have to pray for wisdom and courage. Because it's not easy to stand up for righteousness when you in a different kind of environment. You all ain't saying amen? amen. This serious thing I talk, you know. <laughs> and so we are happy to have them with us. You know, and because I, I've come to realize the church, my brothers and sisters, socially, people don't realize how valuable the church is for our community. We're hearing about all the murders and crime and so on. I've found over the years, if you have a hundred prisoners and a hundred murderers, you will hardly find of that 100, 98 of them who are actively involved in church and have given their life to Christ. Think about that. Think about that. Don't take my word for it. You check it. Which says it matters to a community when people are gathering for worship and seeking to live for God. And so we're trying to find all kind of avenue to fight crime and all things. This is a good place to start. Enable more and more people to come to worship God, and you got less people involved in crime. Amen? Amen? Amen. And you know, because of the importance of the church, you know, I think we have to continue. One of the reasons we have been dealt in here, so I put in a plug as well, is because as a church, we continue to have problems with immigration. You know, and we really, I, I don't understand why, we, it's not, no, you know, Reverend Delton is not new. We have had problem with dealing with immigration and getting missionary permit for the longest while for the church. I can't understand it. 
And I, I could tell, well, I've shared in a meeting my own little experience because I had CSME, I go for missionary permit, and just as a matter of course and the unnecessary stuff, I just didn't bother with it. You know, uh, imagine I have a, a CSME permit and I was getting difficulty getting a missionary permit, even though I didn't need the missionary permit. But that's just to tell you how difficult the, the thing is. So I'm making sure I put it at the feet of the politicians present here as well. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So we thank God for today, and I think we had a wonderful time in worship. Man, you ain't seem to agree, man. Yeah, man. Okay, well, I expect when I say so, you're going to say amen. amen. And so since we had a wonderful time in worship, we will end with a bang. And so when we get to the end, and can it be, we have to end all the way up so and thing, you know? Brother, Brother Mo, who is your descant person who's going to be able to give me the high note to finish? There's, all right, good. So I come, in, I come in for some help on that last note, right? Good. So let's stand and sing the last two verses together. <laughs> no condemnation. Now. Sorry, my bad. Sin, and my body does not die. I diffuse the, I diffuse the quick name. I woke the dawn, John flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose. Fools and followed thee My chains fell off My heart was free I rose when fools and followed thee No condemnation No condemnation Now I tread Jesus and God in him is mine. I live in him, I live in head, I hold in my just nest divine. Bold I approach the eternal throne and clean crown to Christ my own. Bold I approach. Don't rush it, don't rush it. The eternal throne and claim Sorry. the crown. Hold, hold, hold. Wait, no man, be patient. We are through. Through Christ, my. Amen. The benediction. Let us pray. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to prevent, uh, present us faultless before his coming with rejoicing. To the only God be glory and honor in this church now and always. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The choir. the choir. The choir will minister. Don't move, don't move. Hi everyone, good afternoon. On your way out, you will be refreshed underneath the small tent and the elderly will stay inside and be served. Thank you. Don't move, the choir has a benediction. Mm -hmm.